Nelson is heralded as New Zealand's craft brewing capital, and we're heading to one of the more iconic breweries of the area, McCashin's Brewery, housed in the Rochdale Cider Factory in Stoke. Hey man, here we are in uh, Stoke and Nelson at the uh, McCashin's Brewery, and our uh, family have taken back the ownership, so it'll be um, cool to see what's going on here. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. He's here already. Hi, I'm Luke. Sam. Hi, Sam. Kelly. Hey, how's it going, Sam? So, what, what's your role here, Sam? Uh, head brewer. Yep. Right. So, um, I've been on board since sort of the start of the year. I've been uh, developing the brand as we as we sort of went. Oh, what's your background? Where, where have you come from previously? Um, I did brew here under the Lion Days. Okay. Um, essentially, I mean, I came from a typical home brewer background. Sort of, I, I grew an interest. Yeah, I'm too young to buy it, so make it. <laughs> and that actually, to me, it spawned an interest. What is, so what about the beer itself? I mean, what are you guys doing regarding the beer, the beer styles? You know, what's what's your product range? Um, I mean, at the moment, we've just got the three. We've got uh, of the beer, we've got the gold, the amber, and the dark. Um, looking at building more, um, we're just going for basically tasty beers, some, something which has got a good flavour, good flavour to it, uh, good colour, aroma, all that sort of, just just something tasty. There's a lot of yeah, a lot of interest as well. You know, being the McCashin family and everything, there's, a, there's just a lot of interest behind it, um, and. The, the brands have been received quite favourably. There's been a lot of a lot of people have liked it. It's now distributed nationwide, yeah. and um, it's kegs as well. Yeah, kegs. So you can pretty much uh, nearly get it where you used to be able to get the, uh, the yeah. first round of McCashin's beers. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's cool for me. I mean, I, I get a little kick when you walk into a supermarket and see the brand on the on the shelves. Yeah, I'll get used to it, but <laughs> it, it's still a little buzz. <laughs> Well, should we go and have a little bit of a look in the inside and yeah. check it out? Check sure. out the brewery. Yeah. Yep, let's do it. All right. Pioneered by former All Black Terry McCashin, the brewery led the way in the New Zealand craft brewing scene through the 80s and 90s with a fantastic range of beers. The Max brand was brought out by Lion Breweries in 1999, and after a 10 year hiatus, Terry Sundean and his wife Emma resurrected the McCashin's brewery, producing the Stoke range of beers. So we've got, yeah, our fermenters, yeah, 200 litres, we've got, um, we then got the yeah, air conditioning which goes, we've got uh, so our larger tanks is 60,000, okay. so we can put three fermenters in there. Yeah, and what, cold fermentation using, I mean you've got your own house strain, you have your lager yeast? Yeah, we, we've got, yeah, we've got our own strain of yeast, uh, we've got cooling jackets and everything on them, so they're, they're all in a, in, a, like, in a cool room, but with cooling jackets, so we can, we can control all of that. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, I've been a little bit distracted and I see a sign over there that says Bear Nursery. Bear Nursery. What, what, what's pilot that? Plant. Pilot plant. That's a pilot plant, yeah. Every good brewery has a pilot plant, a place for brewers to experiment and perfect recipes, to play with processes and ensure that a batch is absolutely right for upscaling to a larger brew size. This small kit consists of a mash lauder ton, a mill, kettle and a load of fantastic little temperature control fermenters. Jealous? Yes, we were. We wanted to brew. The mash tun and water. Yeah, yeah, good old, uh, So your water, you can yeah, recirc and then into your kettle. The main thing that we have is probably because we're using the steam coils in the kettle and the and the large plant, um, you get you get more hop utilization. So usually what I'm having to do is from here to um, upscaling it. Yeah, yeah. You're just knocking the hops back a bit. Okay, sure. But, I mean, this has just got um, just elements in yeah, it, like yeah. like the big kettle elements. The, the ultimate uh, test kit, really. Oh yeah. yeah. You take these test brews and put them on the fill your own. Uh, yeah. So people yep. can come and actually try sort of the, the beers yep. you're playing around with, and yep. so there's always something a little bit sneaky on those taps, and oh, yeah. you yep. never know what's going to be there. Yeah. I, I don't put crap on, but I, I, I put things I'm happy to put on. Yep. If, if I think it's if I think it's if I want to know what people think of it, then I'll yep. put it on and um, something something interesting. Yeah. There's there's always I'm always rotating. But do, honestly, it doesn't take long to get through a keg. You know, a couple, couple of that. weeks, people, people will go in there and they'll have a couple of glasses and take a rigger home and you'll empty your keg pretty quick. Sam was originally an avid home brewer, so it comes as no surprise that he's been playing around with a few recipes in the beer nursery. What have you got on, on at the moment? Uh, there's an ale on there, a pale ale, and I've got a wheat beer actually. Okay, cool. Yeah. Or something that might be a possibility for the future. Might be. But you I, never I've always, know. I've always been pushing the wheat beer. Um, yeah, Dean's not a big wheat beer drinker, but I think I'm convincing him actually. He likes the one that's on there at the moment. So, um, what style of wheat beer are um, you looking at? Is it a German style, Belgian? Probably, probably go for a um, 
probably filter it, I think. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure that one out as we go. Um, I'd like to do a nice crystal, crystal yeah. yeah, crystal week there. So is, is there any chance we could maybe go and have a little little sample and see what oh, they yeah. taste like? Yeah. Oh yeah. Should we, uh, should we head and do it? Macashans doesn't just stop at beer, it also bottles 26,000 year old water from a local aquifer and uses apples from a local orchard to make its sparkling Rochdale cider. The brewery itself has a coffee shop which sells loads of great local beverages and food. The Macashans family have definitely reinvigorated the factory and we can't wait to have a taste of the beers. Alright, um, well this is, the, this is the gold. Technically it's a golden ale. The emphasis on these beers anyway, the first three that we've got is actually being sort of more on the maltiness. The, the, the hops are there and they're present and they, they complement nicely but rather than being a big of hops which a lot of other people are doing, um, we're sort of concentrated on doing just tasty malty beers. Um, I mean for me personally I, I think that the sort of beer you can sit down and have one with, with a meal or whatever or just one at a pub um, but you know I could quite happily drink six or 14 or What's the number? Yeah. Six or four, six. Uh, <laughs> somewhere in between and I lose count. Yeah. No, I mean they're just, just to me they're tasty beers. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're a term that we throw around sessionable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a little bit, little bit malt sort of definitely there on the nose. Just nice and subtle. Sweetness, yeah, yeah. And, and some uh, just a hint of hop as well, so you can eat both of those on the nose. Clean, mm. well balanced. Mm -hmm. Very drinkable. Such, such a floral sort of hop character in there as well. So this is nice bit four percent or five percent? Four and a half. Ah, there we go. Yeah. So this one's the amber. Obviously, it's got this sort of amber colour. It's got a little bit red, isn't it? It's yeah. A bit of a red tint. Bit of a bit of a reddish, reddish. I mean, some of that comes from um, there's, there's a bit of Munich melanoidin in there, which is giving it giving it a bit of that. Um, this one is sort of a quite a it's a little bit sweeter. It's quite quite malty. Um, sort of more, it's in more, um, yeah, just more malty than, than right. The other ones are malty, but this one probably just a bit more so. Um, and again, sort of the subtle hops got a little bit of bitterness in there, but um, nothing crazy, nothing to sort of overpower the maltiness in there. The amber goes down a treat. Its solid malt backbone paving the way for a light bit of finish and subtle sweetness. It's really Bars nice. Hand, I've heard someone describe that, and I went, ah, um, you know, that sort of... I'd say a candied almond. Candied almond, almond yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or a caramelised ar almond, perhaps, mm -hmm. you know, with, with a nice caramel and a crust ramen. Almond, 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 almond. Great words, guys. I've got to write these down. <laughs> and then there's a, a little bit of hot perfume again in the mouth. Yep. Integrates really well with that maltiness. Yep. Nice beer, nice beer. Candy and toffee is um, pretty mm. dominant, isn't it? So this is uh, also four, four and a half percent? Four and a half, yep. The three that we've got at the moment, four and a half percent. Three of them. I like it. I like, I like amber, amber style beers. This is a mm. great example. It hasn't got too much of that, that forward sort of, some of them get a little buttery, a little too intense in the caramel. Yeah. It comes across maybe as a little diacetyl. This, yeah. this doesn't have that at all, so it's a good, great usage of malt. Next up, we try the Stoke Dark, the third mainstay of their range of beers. So this one's the Dark, um, obviously by its colour. It's still... <laughs> You still see through it a little. Um, it's got a nice sort of darker colour. There's a slight red in there. Um, the six different malts in there, I've basically gone from right from your roasted and sort of moved through the malts to the pale. So you get quite a balance of the maltiness in there. And the hops have got some, there's about four different additions from your bittering hops. And I've even gone right through to um, a small dry hop nice. as well. So it's sort of trying not to trying to really balance it well that you've got a nice sort of roasted sweetness, the malts, the hops and everything that all sort of trying to balance it together that there's not too much of of anything over over dominating. Sure. So I hope I've achieved that. Yeah so straight away I'm getting that little hop on the nose. It's definitely there. Uh, blends in quite well with a little subtle almost like milk chocolate sort of character uh, coming coming from that sort of malt complexity. Mm. Yeah, very smooth, very smooth. A little, maybe sort of a, a wisp, as, how's that for a good word? A wisp of vanilla as well in there. Maybe yep. some kind of roasted malt kind of smokiness. A little bit of that sort of roast malt astringency, which is good. It balances that sweetness quite well. And not as bitter as the other two in the, in the finish. Quite clean, uh, a little bit dry, and I think very drinkable. Yeah, well done. 
The McCashin clan have definitely done something fantastic by keeping their brewing tradition alive, pushing forward Terry's legacy and making some awesome beer in the process. Nelson is leading the way in New Zealand craft brewing and having hard-working folk like Dean and Emma McCashin and the skill of head brewer Sam Wilson, it's great to see such success. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Sam. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. Cheers. Great meeting you. Yeah, yeah you thanks too. for showing us around. Keep yeah. up the good work, eh? Yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers. cheers. Catch you later. Another Nelson Brewery down and a bunch more to go. With only two days to cover the region and 11 breweries to get to, we should probably spend less time tasting the beers and more time chatting to the brewers. In true Nelson style, the sun is shining, the hops are beginning to open and ripen, and these brewers won't interview themselves. Hey, I kind of feel like a steak. 